Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of the Jack Swarbrick Show. On today's show, we'll talk with Notre Dame cross-country runner Karen Lesowitz, and we'll meet Jim McLaughlin, the new head coach of the Notre Dame women's volleyball team. And now to get things started, here are your hosts, Notre Dame Vice President and Director of Athletics Jack Swarbrick and Notre Dame Captain and Starting Linebacker Joe Schmidt. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to everybody. Joe, it's great to have you here. Another, yeah. another week, another game. Another game. Another um, game down. Yeah, one, one more down. It was a, uh, uh, the ultimate mixed bag, right? A, yeah. a thrilling victory, but under the toughest of circumstances. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I, I, you, you don't ever really uh, have that kind of reaction. You know, I, I, I touched my head and I'm, I'm kind of looking down uh, after a victory. Uh, but it was hard fought and... Um, Obviously, you know we lost uh, we lost some key contributors, and that's hard to do. So it's uh, got to put it behind us now. But it's still there's a, there's still that li- a little bit of lingering pain there for for some of us. Yeah, no, I mean if if this team has had one uh, one hallmark in this young season, it's been resiliency. Uh, we hate that people are dropping at the rate they're dropping. Yeah, um, we're now five starters down, but uh, but everybody's been been stepping up and the uh the latest example of that was Deshaun who uh came in under tough circumstances and did well yeah you know and and I think people tend to forget because the conversation was was Malik and and Everett before that and then their competition before before and so people tend to forget that Deshaun was was a a very highly raked recruit uh, out of Ohio when he came out of high school and and he's a very very capable quarterback and so um I think that that people just they kind of just tend to overlook that fact and and think, oh yeah, well he was he was a backup, but he's a very very capable quarterback, and he and I think that um, our team is extremely confident of of our prospects with him at the helm, and and he's been doing a very good job at the at the line of scrimmage this week, you know, com- with his command of the offense, and and he really doesn't look like um, like someone that's coming in to fill in right now. It looks like he's he's assuming the role of, of the starting quarterback at Notre Dame, and and that's what we need is uh, need our quarterback to do so. Uh, I think that's great for us. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a really intelligent, uh, bright young guy. I was talking to Coach on Sunday morning, and uh, you know, one of the things we're talking about is you can't coach six four. No, um, he, he's, I, I know well enough. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot coach myself any taller than what I am right now. <laughs> But he sees the field really well, and you saw that in in this game, especially on the two point conversion. Yeah, where I mean, there was a lot of movement going on, a lot of traffic flying around, and and uh, he saw through it. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I think Deshaun is a you know he's a he's a he's a cerebral player. Uh, you know, he's a very high intellect, and and that's something that he uh, people have known about him since day one, since he got here, and um, you know that just from talking to him, uh, just in everyday conversation, but uh, talking the game of football as well. Um, He's one of the guys in the team I like. To, I really like to talk football with, um, and he's always been able to give me a, a great idea of how the offense is doing and, and and what's been going on. So I'm really excited to see uh, to see how he kind of acts now in, in in the in the starting role as he's assumed that role. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this this next week with Georgia Tech. Yeah, another loss in that game, of course, was Durham Smythe. Oh. And, um, you know, I, I must ask Durham, well, I did ask him three times, once in the locker room, once on the bus, and once on the plane, are you okay? And he lied to me all three yeah, times, <laughs> uh, assured me he was, but obviously uh, a lot going on there with the knee and the shoulder, and so that's a that's a tough loss, but at a, at a fairly well-stocked position. Yeah, I actually, I went I went by uh, St. Liam's last night, spent about uh, an hour with Durham and his mom, and it's actually it's entertaining almost in a in a sick way because Durham's entire right side has been just demolished. <laughs> so his his right shoulder was surgically re- repaired, his right knee was surgically repaired, and he has a very very sprained right ankle. <laughs> so it's it's horrible because he's trying to get around. He's got one arm, one leg, and it's 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 actually you have to laugh at this point. And so um, you know Durham's a great sport about it, but we really do have a lot of depth at the at the tight end position. Um, Chase. Townshell, Townshell, you know, is always joking about how uh, we're tight end you with uh, with the chosen one Alize that that, that has now arrived. So um, we have, you know, Alize, Alize Jones, Nick Wisher, Tyler Luatua, Chase. Um, those are four guys that are very capable of stepping up now uh, in Durham's absence, and and really looking forward to see how those guys perform uh, now on Saturdays. Defensively, what's your takeaway from the weekend at Virginia? Uh, well, we we know we're going to fight hard. Um, I think our execution level, um, you know, dipped a little bit uh, at times, but 
we really did, we play the game uh, with such passion, with tenacity uh, and toughness up front, and 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 really guys just like they love playing. We love playing together, and we love running the football. So um, overall, uh, I think we 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 gave up some points due to you know, maybe an explosive play here or there, but we played pretty pretty good football um, as a defense. But um, there were a lot of things that we need we need to correct and. Um, and move forward for uh, so that we can be ready for Georgia Tech this week, and that's kind of what we've been focusing on all week. And obviously, uh, it's a little a little different of an opponent though uh, coming in this weekend. Arguably the most efficient offense in the country. Yeah. They, uh, in terms of uh, points per possession, time of possession, um, you know, the, you you know what they're going to run, but it sure isn't easy to stop. No, um, it, it's 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 really not easy to stop at all. And 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 they they have so many different weapons, so many ways of attacking you, and and they know how you're going to. They they know how everyone's tried to uh, defend this option offense for the last 50 years. So. Uh, for everything you do, they 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 think they have an answer. So it's it's kind of an interesting game of chess uh, between us and 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 our opponent this week. And um, and really, in, in the end of the day, though, it comes down to the tough man's football game uh, this weekend. They're going to come in and they're going to try to punch us right in the mouth. And and that's and that's how option teams do it. And so uh, for a defensive for a defensive guy for a linebacker, this is. This is a this is a great game because you get to go in there and you, you just get to tackle people and hit people all day long. So it's going to be really fun. Um, our fans are used to seeing relative to option football, seeing us play Navy. Right. How does this attack, this version of the option, differ? Uh, so, um, I mean, without getting too much into like uh, understanding tendencies for Georgia Tech or Navy, um, Georgia Tech is not as uh, they do a, a little bit more with their scheme. So they, they, uh, they have a couple different formations that they like to use, whereas Navy likes uh, some, other, some other formations uh, more. So I think that the overall aesthetic look, along with the players being just slightly bigger for Georgia Tech, um, and, and that's just how they like to run their offense, though. So they like their, their, their offensive linemen are anywhere from 300 to one of their, their guards is 370 pounds. Um, and Navy likes their, their linemen, obviously, a little bit smaller. Uh, so their you know navies are 280 to 300 pounds. So uh, so that I think there's a fundamental difference is on the offensive line, and then um, just in the plays that they call, they have a, they have some different plays that Georgia Tech likes to run. But there are a, a lot of similar similarities. So uh, for us, it's good that we play navy because it prepares us for games like for, for games like this weekend. At 370, I don't think you can get on the battleship. I don't. I, don't. I, I was gonna say I don't think uh, I don't think the Navy needs any 375 or 70 pound uh, gentlemen uh, on the on their uh, on their aircraft carriers. It might be a little difficult to get through those those small holes in in the wall. I don't even know what you call them. <laughs> no, no sailors among us. No, right? no. Yeah, I'm looking no. around trying to get an answer. I got I got nothing. <laughs> um, you know, each week brings us another episode of uh, the Showtime series we talked about last week. Uh, did you watch this week's, and what did you think? I did. Um, I thought it, I thought it was great. Uh, they they did a great job of of making you know of kind of showing more of a human element to the team. Uh, the first one was tough because you know they kind of had to cover so much so much ground um, in the first thirty minutes. So uh, this week I, I really enjoyed they you know they did a, a great special on Malik and obviously the ending of that um, of this last episode this last week was was tough to watch um, but then they did some cool stuff on CJ Procise and and Chris Brown just kind of hanging out and, and being with the boys so um, I liked I liked that I thought they did a good job of kind of just showing uh, showing what was going on in the program and and uh, I also like that they highlighted uh, Joe Plumeri's talk because that was one of my favorite things we've done here at Notre Dame and. Um, and honestly, he, he might be the, the best public speaker I've ever heard uh, I've ever heard speak. So that was, um, if if for no other reason, you should watch the uh, the special for that. Uh, everybody on the air. So you've never heard me speak publicly. I was going to say, I, I I've never heard you personally <laughs> speak. Um, <laughs> I'm backtracking quickly here. <laughs> but, late, uh, late though. Late. Yeah, You're late. backtracking late but quickly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, no, he he was. Um, I said one of the, so you could be in that conversation as well. Uh, but he was he was passionate, fiery, and he had a great message. So it was he was really good. Yeah, that was, uh, and, and that theme of burning the boats has sort of stayed with us uh, since then. Yeah, no, he really has, and and it's kind of become one of our catchphrases and our mottos, and and something we're living by this uh, this year as a football team. 
Um, and it's actually there's a funny story regarding that whole um, that whole Viking that whole Viking analogy that he used. And he he kind of asked the team if anyone knew of the Vikings, and you know a few hands dot the crowd. Uh, you know, one guy raises his hands. I'm not going to say who, but his explanation of what the Vikings were uh, might have not been up to par. Uh, thankfully, that did not make the uh, that did not make the show. Um, he didn't exactly get what the Vikings were, so we're not going to mention the guy's name, but. Uh, it was an entertaining moment for us. Well, and and uh, <laughs> given the number of uh, alums we have on the other Vikings in Minnesota, exactly. it's logical to us. Uh, it's to logical. Think of them. It's very, very logical. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say what happened, but you guys can use your imaginations. <laughs> um, you know, we talked about the injuries. You're now two weeks in the season. Week three, a tough game ahead of us. Everybody's beat up a little bit, bumps, bruises. How does the week's prep? Does it does it does it reflect that? Is it different once you get into the season? How how do you approach it? So, well, football's you know it's a contact game and it's a violent game. So, um, bumps and bruises they're going to come with the with with the with the you know with the program. That's that's, that's going to happen. So, um, all right, well, luckily for us, we have a great training staff and an understanding coaching staff that kind of work with you through those bumps and bruises so um, if you need to go on a Tuesday and, and be smart about what you do with your shoulder or if you have a you know if you have a hamstring you can work around it in a, and still get great productive reps uh, but maybe protect something on your body so um, I think that they're, they're they do a really good job of that but also keeping practices intense and competitive because if once you lose that intensity and that competitiveness there's really no other, there's no reason to be out there. You're just kind of, you're meandering around and, and you're not getting uh, quality looks and you're not getting ready for Saturday. So you kind of have to balance, you have to balance it though, because it is a long, it's a long marathon um, of a season and it's not really a sprint. So you have to make sure that you're smart um, about those injuries so that you can, you can perform on Saturdays, you know, in September, October, November, and then hopefully uh, sometime in late, late December or January. Well, I agree. We got we, we, we from from trainers to strength conditioning to our coaches. I think there's a real awareness of that in the way they build the program. Definitely. Let's uh, let's take a break and we'll come back with our guests. Looking forward to it.